this uh, the so-called Church of the Eternally Secure. And this guy called himself Brother Luke. And um, they're answering questions. So what I'm doing is I'm going through and looking at the questions that are being asked of them. And then I'm testing the spirits to see, you know, what I'm, I'm going to look in the scriptures and see uh, if what they're saying is so. So you can do that. You can just like I'm testing them. You can test me and you can test me and them both. I mean, we should all be searching the scriptures, guys, and uh, making sure that what we're being told is actually um, accurate and true. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and play here. I'm at the 57, <coughs> 57, 39 in their video, just in case you want to find the video. I don't know what the name of the video is, though. I don't know what the name of the video is. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I don't know what the name of it is. Well, in all my studies, uh, not that I'm, you know, the most uh, scholarly uh, person ever, but I have done a lot of studying. I've never seen the phrase, quote, Galatian error, unquote, um, anywhere. And it's not that there is no such thing. There is a Galatian error. But I've never used it, seen it, it, it as a label in, in that way. So if, if I was asked, well, what is the error in the book of Galatians that's being addressed? What is the error in the book of Galatians that's being addressed? What, what part are you talking about? Uh, I would say the error is that Paul said. I mean, what is he talking about? I'm sorry. Am I missing something? I'm sorry. I got to go back because I don't. Man. Oh, I. It goes, does it go backwards or forwards? Anywhere. And it's not that there is no such. Okay, I got it. I'm sorry. 57, 56. I got to hear it. That's our purpose. There's a difference between the, the, the fact that we were rescued and given eternal life because we were hopeless and, and the purpose that we have a life here. Otherwise, why didn't God just take us to heaven right then? We have a purpose to serve here. I believe. Yeah, as children of God, once you're saved, he says, now you can go and save. Others need to go get saved. Just like uh, Christ came unto you. Now Christ is in you and you go with Christ in you to go save others. Preach the word in season, not a season. And when people believe they're born again, that's, that's the purpose of us being here. Right. That's why we say, follow me as I follow Christ. We follow in the regeneration, meaning you're born again. And then we tell other people, now you need to follow in the regeneration. And then they're born again and so on and so forth. Believe that. Mm -hmm. Not legally. OK, uh, I want to talk just a little bit more about this term Galatian error and give you my uh, thoughts on what that is. OK, he's talking about this Galatian error. It would be helpful if he actually quoted the scriptures that he's talking about. But, but, but then I want to move on because we've got a lot of questions in the chat room. And I've got several questions that people mailed in. There have been, they've been waiting for several weeks. So uh, in the chat room, be patient. Uh, we can't answer. Uh, while we're answering one question, we cannot go right to yours. So be, be patient with us. This Galatian error, first of all, in all my studies, uh, not that I'm you know the most... Uh, scholarly uh, person ever, but I have done a lot of studying. I've never seen the phrase, quote, Galatian error, unquote, um, anywhere. And it's not that there is no such thing. There is a Galatian error, but I've never used it, seen it, it, it as, as a label in, in that way. So if, if I was asked, well, what is the error in the book of Galatians? This Does he mean it's an error in the scriptures or there's an error... Meaning people are doing error and it's being addressed in the scriptures. What do you mean Galatians, Galatian error? It's being addressed. Uh, I would say the error is that Paul says, I came, gave you the gospel and you believed and you got saved in, by, in faith alone. Now, if, you, if, you, if you've been paying attention and you, uh, you uh, look at uh, what we've been saying about the book of Galatians, the book of James, Romans, the book of Acts, there's a clear, clear record that the very beginning of the church, first of all, they, they didn't even know that Gentiles will be included. There was a lot of prejudice against Gentiles. They wouldn't associate with them. They wouldn't go in their home. They wouldn't eat with them. They certainly didn't want them to be part of their, uh, uh, their faith unless they converted to Judaism. So uh, that's the first thing. They, they weren't aware that uh, Christ is for everybody, Jews and Gentiles alike. 
and they also they they when they started uh, bringing gentiles in because peter was sent to cornelius's house god sent him there to uh uh give the gentiles the gospel and uh there was resistance to that. They didn't want, they were angry and upset that Peter would do such a thing. And when they conceded that, okay, this is what God wants, they still wanted to insist that, okay, they, they need to convert to Judaism like us. They need to get circumcised. They, they must keep the Sabbath. They got to follow the laws of Moses. And by the time we get to the book of Hebrews, they're saying, and then they got to continue doing the animal sacrifices. They did not realize that um, that, that uh, Judaism served its purpose. Now they need to leave it behind and 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 make a clear separation between religious works of Judaism and faith alone in the Savior Jesus. And this is these are the two problems that had to be resolved in the first century of the church, uh, accepting the fact that Jesus is for everybody, not only Jews. And if you're not a non-Jew. You, you can come in and you don't have to convert to Judaism. And Paul even went to, so far as to say, if you are a Jew who now believes Jesus is the Messiah, uh, you should not continue practicing the law. That's why they wanted to kill Paul. Because This is the one of the dumbest things I've, I've heard. I mean, guys, this is absolutely phenomenally dumb. Do these guys, I mean... How do you, on one hand, say you understand what it means to be born again and then say something as ludicrous and as dumbfounding as what this guy is saying? How can you claim you understand what it means to be born again and then have all this stuff talking about some, well, back in the Old Testament and all this kind of stuff? When it clearly the scriptures say Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. The gospel priest before unto Abraham. How could you say this stuff? And so now he's given credence. <clears throat> he's given credibility because these people were being addressed as being fake and phony because they didn't believe. And they are thinking, trying to make God to be a respecter person. And they stopped doing they, these guys who were doing this, they quote, never were the people who didn't believe they never were the sheep. That's what the issue was. He's like, you're not my sheep. It wasn't that they were his sheep. He was saying, if you're not born again, you're not my sheep, period. And so that's what makes you a sheep of God. His sheep have eternal life for this man to say what he is saying. It is so, I, I mean, I'm trying not to be too quote unquote harsh, but quite frankly, he's making a mockery right now. This is just as this is making a mockery. And this is what I'm talking about, guys, for you listen to this person say stuff like this. And these guys are trying to give credibility to people who don't believe. And they're pretending as if there was other people who who didn't believe. There was people who always believed. the true people were always the people of faith. And that's why the scriptures clearly say from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. And so now this guy is making it seem like because he wants to keep this stupidity of the flesh. He wants to make it seem like, well, you know, there was this group of people and he wants to make it seem like they're legitimately the people of God. When they're clearly not. The distinction is between those people who believed and those people who did not believe. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now think about that. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Why would those two things be? Well, because you're born again when you believe the gospel. And you must be born again. This guy is taking the fact that the scriptures are addressing heresy and that it became a prevalent heresy that people were claiming that they're the seed of Abraham by the flesh and claiming because they're Abraham's seed that they're the people of God, which is a complete lie given that God says they that are in the flesh can't please God because if 
you're in the flesh. That means you haven't believed, which means you haven't been converted, which means you're not a true Jew. And so that's why it says, look to the Jew first, because you have to believe and be converted first. And then you can go out and be a light to the, to all the other nations. I mean, what this man is saying is so asinine. It is so ridiculous. It is beyond the pale of, of, of just lunacy. Because he was, but he sounds, but he sounds intelligent when he's saying it, right? This guy traveling all over the world, telling us the Jews, they don't have to keep the law. So uh, this was the controversy in the church. And this is what's being addressed in the book of Galatians. Not only Galatians, but all Paul's churches. What happened to the stuff with David was like, blessed is the man whose iniquities are forgiven, who God will not impute sins. What happened to the Abraham believed God? If Abraham was justified by works, he'd, he'd have wherefore to boast. What happened to all those scriptures? He's making it seem like, well, there's a group of people who thought who did this and did that. Abraham understood. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all understood that you're saved by grace through faith. All these people understood that. There's there's only there's one Lord, one faith. And see, this is this again, this is the asinine thing. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. And that's when the scripture said it's sown a natural body, is raised a spiritual body. But it's saying it's not sown a natural body, meaning it's not that you sowed flesh and blood into the spirit. Jesus tells Nicodemus, he says, if you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. You sow into the spirit, you shall the spirit reap life everlasting. Each produces after its kind. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. God is called the father of spirits. Tell you children of flesh aren't children of God. Says they in the flesh can't please God. And it's that simple. And that's why it says they in the flesh cannot please God. Because if you don't believe, you're not born again. You're a child of flesh and not a child of promise. And God's called the father of spirits. It's as, it really is as simple as that. See, the fact that God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, so that's why you can't really tell because you're not supposed to be looking at the outward appearance because you can't tell who has Christ in them. If I told you right now, I said, well, let me go outside. Let's go outside. Let's look at a whole huge, a crowd, guys. And I'd say, well, who in this crowd has, has Christ in them? Who has the Savior in them? You should look at me like I'm crazy. But if you're, if you're in a fool, you'll say, well, look at that person wearing that religious garb. Look at their phylacteries. Look at those beautiful uh, religious garb that they have on. And you'd be foolish enough to say, well, because they're dressed to look a certain way, that must mean they're highly religious and they're more likely than, than not to have the Messiah in them. Well, you'd be wrong. <clears throat> you'd be wrong to do that because the only way would you would know is what? Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Since you seek a proof of what the Messiah speaking in me. What this guy is saying is so foolish. I, it's just beyond the pale, guys. There was a people called Judaizers and they were from Judah. Uh, and which is in Jerusalem. They came from the Jerusalem church led by uh, James, who was the leader of the Jerusalem church. And they said that they were certain men from James came and they're telling people that you've got to convert and practice Judaism in addition to believing in Jesus. This was the error that was being uh, taught uh, at all Paul's churches. It was a big headache. And they believe this is what when Paul says that there was a, he had a thorn in his flesh. Well, um, I, I, we don't use that uh, vernacular today. Uh, normally, I would say that, wow, I, I, I've got a pain in my ass. Excuse the language, but that's, that's how we would express it today. That means that, that this particular person is being difficult in my life. And that's what Paul was saying, that this thorn of flesh, these, if you read the context leading up to that, that statement, He's talking about the Judaizers coming into his churches and, and causing all this trouble. He's trying to force them to, uh, to uh, also practice Judaism. Uh, so that's what this is all about. And, and the Galatian error. He's talking about people trying to teach works and trying to teach that. Uh, basically, these people are not understanding that in their flesh, there's no good thing. Didn't Paul say that? Didn't Paul directly said he says, look. 
He says, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Isn't that the thorn? Isn't that what he's talking about? But he says, I delight at the law of God after my inward man. And the inward man's talking about a spirit. I mean, what this guy is saying is so ludicrous. He's, he's, he's making it try. He's trying to legitimize and make it seem like, well, you know, they are the people. No, they, if you're of the flesh, you're not the people of God. You're not God's sheep. It's as simple as that. If you don't have eternal life, you're not God's sheep. And the sheep of the flesh are not the sheep of God. Just like it says, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Guys, all you got to do is say the sheep of the flesh are not the sheep of God. as I see it, is Paul coming in to, back to the Galatian church saying, I taught you that you're saved by faith in Christ, and, and now you're believing that you've got to also convert to Judaism. No, you've got to separate Judaism. That's not This is so stupid, guys. They're, what they're doing is they're trying to get rid of the fact that a, a, the conversion, the true conversion, is the same one Lord, one faith that's always been. It's always been. It's always been anyone who's converted is a Jew. Anyone who's not converted is a Gentile. The fact that these people started calling themselves Jews in unbelief based on works is that's their error. And so the scriptures clearly let you know, look, there's some people who say they're Jews and they're not. And then it tells you a Jew is not one who's one outwardly, neither that circumcision outward and in the flesh, but a Jew is one who's one inwardly and circumcision is that by the heart. Right. That means from faith to faith. Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. By the heart, in the spirit, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so, be the spirit of God dwelling you. And not of the letter by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, whose praise is not of men like these guys are doing, but of God. And God says they that are in the flesh cannot please. Them. So God's not, you telling me God's praising somebody who doesn't even believe. He's praising the flesh when he says they in the flesh can't please God. You telling me the apple of God's eye is, is the flesh. This, I'm telling you guys, <clears throat> you, you keep, you're thinking these guys who believe this Trinity, you're thinking everything's all good and okie dokie and hunky dory and all this kind of stuff. It's actually not. It's actually not. See, they, they got this false God and they can't, they can't seem to rightly divide. There's something that's so simple. That they learn the flesh can't please God. God's called the father of spirits. And from faith to faith, you think as much as they claim and scream faith, you think they understand it. Hey, it's one Lord, one faith. And they're making it seem like, well, there's this big transition. No, 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 no. No one was ever saved by the old covenant. No one was ever saved by the old covenant, period. The, the stuff they're saying, he talked about, he says, look, um, at the beginning, he talked about, look, they had the law of Moses. He said they were supposed to be the oracles of God. He says they wouldn't go in their house and wouldn't even eat with them. Well, that's that's actually biblical. But when you make it carnal and you're and you're carnally minded and you don't seem to understand what he talks about. Well, you're not supposed to a Jews not supposed to go in the house of a Gentile. Right. Well, that's true, because, look, you're not in the flesh because the body is a temple, but in the spirit. Right. So you don't go back into the house of a Gentile. That's why it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. The house is the temple, the body, the flesh. And that's why Jesus says, I don't dwell in the temples made with hands. Neither my worship with men's hands. Well, how can he says I don't dwell in the temples made with hands? Neither my worship with men's hands. When clearly the flesh of Mary came from her parents who are of the flesh that's exactly why Romans 8, 8 and Romans 8, 9 says, look, they that are in the flesh can't please God, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwelleth in you. He's considering that man that you could see the outward man, which Paul says, if I do the things that I would not, it's no longer I that do it, but sin it dwelleth in me. That's in my flesh dwells no good thing. Paul saying, that's not even me. That man that you can see is not me. So you're not supposed to, quote, eat with the Gentiles. That's absolutely true. But when Jesus says, look, I'm offering people the living water and the bread of life, they have to believe by faith. And then he says, look, now that you're born again, quote, unquote, you can partake because you believe the gospel. 
That's what he's calling. He's just saying your belief. It's not like literally, I'm literally eating something. He that eateth of the bread that I give will never hunger. He that drinketh of the water that I give will never thirst. It says, talking about the house, he's talking about, again, God doesn't dwell in the temples made with hands, neither does he worship with men's hands. They in the flesh can't please God. So don't go into their house. Don't eat with them because all men are liars. She says, I'm the way, the truth, the life. And no truth is of a lie and no lie is of the truth. All men have corrupt, corrupt speech. So see people, see this, this carnal understanding and when he talks about being born again, he's talking about being born again by the word of God. The words that I speak to you, there are spirit in our life. And so you're not supposed to mix what? The seed. You're not supposed to mix the word of God, which is light, with darkness. As light has no fellowship with darkness. No truth is of the lie. There's a spirit of error and a spirit of truth. And then the scripture says, say it's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And since all men are liars... They that are in the flesh can't please God, but it says you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, even though God is manifest in the flesh. Justified in the what? Spirit. Seen of angels preached to the what? Preach to the Gentiles, those who need to hear the truth, because what? Salvations of the Jews. You must be converted first and then you can go out and convert the non-believers. Guys, this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 10. It says, uh, because it talks about people who started calling themselves Jews according to the flesh, which was a lie. And it says, I know them to say they're Jews or not. And then he talks about, I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? He, when he's talking about this, he's saying, look, this is dying to the old man. For we being many are one bread and one body. For we're all partakers of that one bread. Right? He died for everyone. And everybody's of the same flesh and the same, same blood. All men are made of one blood. All men that dwell upon the face of the earth are made of one blood. And all men are of one flesh. There's one type of flesh of man. So this little lie that they got going on of stuff, inventing this thing of ethnicities and so-called race and all, it's just a lie. Behold, Israel after the flesh, right? There's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the what? Spirit. They that are in the flesh can't please God. The whole world is considered to be Israel after the flesh. You're going to think it's 12, supposedly it's 12 tribes, but then you're going to tell me all the 12 tribes look the same. All the 12 tribes have to end up looking in some kind of crazy way, right? It's, it's absolutely asinine. And so, you know, this is why when you go and they talked about the, uh, the Limba tribe and all these kind of different tribes that you hear about in Africa who are dark skinned. And then they're like, well, because think about it, there's many people who would have believed and been converted but it was never about, quote, unquote, the color of your skin or anything like that. So that's why it's so stupid. But then as people got more power and associated with certain governments that got in power, then they said, oh, now I can oppress these other people and just say, make it about the flesh. But then, of course, you're going to be people going to betray one another. They start selling each other out. Right. Because some people never really believed in the first place. But of course, in their flesh, people just want power. That's just the way things go. You know, they love the world. So they love the power and the fame and the glory and all this kind of stuff and the praise of men. Are not they with each other sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idol is anything? He's basically saying this, this is nothing. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, listen. They sacrifice to devils and not to God. Think about this. He says what the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Now, why would Jesus go and tell some other people who claim to be something that they're not? You of your father, the devil, and the works your father you will do is a murder from the beginning and abode not in the truth. And what's the sacrifice that they're offering? They're offering 
children of death. They're offering what? Flesh and all flesh will perish. He's like, why are you offering, why are you offering me imperfect things? Why are you offering me things of blemish, things that are are rotten, things that are corrupt. You know, if you sow into the flesh, you shall the flesh reap corruption. Why are you offering me dead works? We thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Why are you offering me dead works? The works of the flesh. All flesh will perish and go back to the dust. You're offering me dead works. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. Listen to that. I would, I would not that you'd have fellowship with devils. So tell me who's a Gentile, guys. Let me show you something right quick. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this. I was going to do this for another video. Um, 1 Timothy 3.16 sums it up, right? And without controversy, great is the mystery of God and as God was manifest in the flesh. Well, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Listen, justified in the spirit. Yeah, God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, but God is a spirit. That's why he's justified in the spirit and not in the flesh. Now, it says in the scriptures, says, whom he justified, them he also glorified. So if he's justified in the spirit, that means he also is glorified in the spirit. So the glorified body is not flesh. That's why it says no flesh shall glory before him. And that's why it says they in the flesh can't please him. And the children of the flesh are not the children of God. Makes perfect sense, right? But it says, look, scene of angels, ministering spirits. And it says, look, priest unto the Gentiles. Priest unto the Gentiles. It's the spirit that beareth witness. The spirit is truth. It's God that worketh in me. So God is saying, listen, the words that I'm speaking to you, they're a spirit in their life. Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. God is a spirit. And as I give the spirit of truth to men, all men are liars and they need to do what? Believe the truth and not a what? Lie. So don't call God a liar so that you can keep your traditions and your vain imagination. It says priest unto the Gentiles, but it does not say anything about being priest unto the what? To the Jews, because you're giving the gospel to people who are what? unbelievers and this is why Jesus said look God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth he said salvation is of the what Jews now you tell me how is salvation of the Jews if you're not saved and you're still a child of the flesh when we know that if you're still a child of the flesh, that means you haven't been born again. And if you're not born again, that means you haven't believed. If you haven't believed, that means you haven't heard his voice. If you haven't heard his voice, that means you're calling God a liar and you refuse to acknowledge the truth. And so you want to keep your tradition. And that's why people want to say, oh, we be Abraham's seed. So what? We're all Abraham's seed according to the flesh. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. It's talking about the Gentiles sacrifice unto devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Remember the woman? And Jesus said, Is it meat to give the bread of the children unto the dogs? And she said something like, even the dogs eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Remember that? Remember that? It's like, yeah, you got to believe this by faith. See, people think, well, oh, Jesus is just being rude and he's being cruel. No, this all the every every single thing in the Bible is there for a reason to teach us something. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Notice the he. It talks about how the flesh is weak and the spirit is strong. And then it says, of course, we know God is strong. God is the spirit. You don't, you don't see anywhere we're talking about the, the flesh is strong. You see it nowhere. But then, Renee, well, the glorified body is flesh. 
Well, whom he justified, them he also glorified. Well, how come God's justified in the spirit then, Renee? And why does it say you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be the spirit of God dwelleth in you? We know God comes in the likeness of sinful flesh, but you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Hence, God's justified in the spirit. And it says the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. That's what the scriptures say. So this is what it's talking about, guys. This is what it's talking about. When it's talking about a, a Gentile is an unbeliever, it's very clear that's what a Gentile is. This man is speaking foolishly and presumptuously. It's not part of this. That was the Galatian error. Okay. Now, uh, if you I mean, let's, let's go back and listen to the beginning of this. We've got a lot of questions in the chat room, and we've got several questions that people mailed in. There have been, they've been waiting for several weeks, so... Uh, in the chat room, be patient. Uh, we can't answer. Uh, while we're answering one question, we cannot go right to yours. So be, be patient with us. This Galatian error, first of all, in all my studies, uh, not that I'm you know, the most uh, scholarly uh, person ever, but I have done a lot of studying. I've never seen the phrase, quote, Galatian error, unquote, um, anywhere. And it's not that there is no such thing. There is a Galatian error. But I've never used it, seen it, it, it as a label in, in that way. So if, if I was asked, well, what is the error in the book of Galatians that's being addressed? Uh, I would say the error is that Paul says, I came and gave you the gospel, and you believed, and you got saved in, by, in faith alone. Now, if, you, if, you, if you've been paying attention, and you, uh, you uh, look at... Uh, what we've been saying about the book of Galatians, the book of James, Romans, the book of Acts, there's a clear, clear record that the very beginning of the church, first of all, they they didn't even know that Gentiles will be included. This lie that the very beginning of the church, listen, this lie at the very beginning of the church, because the church just began at a certain time. no. You talk about there's, there's a church of God and then there's a church that's not of God. It's the same guys. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. There's a church of God. And there's an Israel of God and the Israel of God and the church of God. They're the same. Acts 738. That is he that was in that church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in, in the Mount Sinai with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. This says the angel. That is he. Let's, let's, let's open this. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me, him shall ye hear. What do you mean? That is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to them in the mount. So the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us to whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them and in their hearts turn back again unto Egypt. So he's talking about, well, you this oracle. And he's talking about as many as received him. But he says, well, some people said, no, they turned their back and said, we don't want to receive this word. We don't want to receive the witness. Well, it's the spirit that bears witness. The spirit is truth. Oh, the angel. He's made his angels ministering spirits. And so they went into Egypt and Egypt represents what, guys? Bondage. He talks about at Mount Sinai. You go to Galatians 4.26. And it tells you what this is all about. And these guys, I'm talking, this is supposed to be the church of the internally secure. And these guys, I'm telling you, guys, you, you, you can't, these guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> listen, listen to this. Tell me ye that desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? This is going, he's talking about Mount Sinai, right? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bond maid and the other by a free woman. But he that was born of the bond woman was born after the flesh. Now it's going to tell you, look, if there's a so-called Israel after the flesh, that's not, the, that's not the Israel of God. But every man can be considered Israel after the flesh because 
the the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So what does it profit to be the children of the flesh? But he of the free woman was by promise. So it's telling you there's a promise. So there's a promise that's being given to you, but you can turn your back to the promise. Right? You say, my heart's with Israel. I love the world. I'm sorry, my heart's with Egypt. My heart's with Egypt. Right? So the lively oracle is given to you. Right? The messenger, the ministering spirit comes, says, look, here it is. You have the law. That's the schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And I'm going to tell you about uh, by grace through faith. And I'm going to give you a promise that if you believe that you can be saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. And then he's saying here in Galatians, tell me to desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? Right? This law is a schoolmaster. Then he tells you about Abraham having two sons, one of the bond made, one by a free woman. Tells you the bond made was born after the flesh. And obviously the one of the promise was born by the what? Spirit, as Jesus told Nicodemus. He tells you this is an allegory of the two covenants. One of the Mount Sinai that gingers to bondage, talking about the law, because you're not going to be free by the law, which is Agar. This Agar and what? Mount Sinai, we just read that, in Arabia, he's telling you it's an allegory, an answer to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. So he says there's a Jerusalem that's in bondage, and those are the ones who are of the flesh. Don't sit here and pretend like, well, this is, well, this is talking about a race thing. There's nothing in this scripture talking about anything about the stupidity of race. Nothing about it. All you have is your presumptions and the lies and the contextualization of the crazy invention of race that man has given you and the lying and the changing of the new scriptures that claim that, claim that there's a chosen race. That's all you have to support that lie. But Jerusalem, listen, there's another which is above, which is free, which is the mother of us all. Now it says there's one in bondage that's after the flesh and there's one that's above that's free, that's mother of us all. And the one of the promise must not be of the flesh. And that's why God's called the father of spirits and says the children of the flesh are children of God. It's written, thou bearest that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac, now it's including Abraham believed God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's talking about they are children of the promise. So they're telling you they're not children of the flesh. The scriptures are telling you that so plainly that for anybody to claim that they, oh, I believe the scriptures. When you, the thing about this, guys, what's so uh, ludicrous and crazy about this is you don't even have to go back to the Old Testament to understand what this is saying. You really don't. You could be like, well, okay, I'm not going to read the Old Testament. This would tell you, this is basically telling you how to understand the Old Testament. It's telling you, look, here's what you need to understand about what's going on. You know, they were Egypt represents bondage, sin and death. It represents children of the flesh who haven't been born again, who have not been converted yet. It represents people who are Gentiles, people who are in unbelief, not the children of God. It says the people who believe the promise, though, because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And when you believe God today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. It says from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. By grace through faith, you're saved, not of works, that any man should what? Both. So the people who are born again, they're no longer in Egypt. They're no longer in bondage. Right? And it says, but as in he that was born after the flesh, listen, persecuted him that was born after the spirit. How so? Because they're gainsayers to the word, to the truth. That's the thorn in the side. The words of men. The lies of men. Gainsayers. Even so, it is now. Because these people, this guy right here, he's a gainsayer. You think, see, they've outsmarted and outwitted you because you think you believe this lie of a chosen race. So you think, well, someone wears a garb. It's almost like these, these guys are just all spies because you, you're thinking, well, if he's not wearing the garb, then he's not working for the Pharisees. He's not a, he's not a, he's not, he's, he's not a, a, a Pharisee or a Pharisee. No, these guys are that. You just don't write. See, you're looking at the outward appearance. You got to listen to what they're saying. When Jesus said, beware of the leaven, he's like, beware of the, the words. Nevertheless, what's said the scripture? Listen, cast out the bond woman and her son. Who are the, who are the children of the bond woman? Oh, they were born after the flesh. 
For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Jesus said the exact same thing to Nicodemus. Lest a man be born again, he cannot see nor enter or inherit the kingdom of God. And flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. There's no way in the world somebody who claims that, oh, I'm a Bible scholar teacher, but sometimes blah, blah, blah. No, God is telling you, look, I know them that say they're my sheep. I know them that say they're a Jew, salvations of the Jews. I know them that say they're my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. I give unto them eternal life. You don't have eternal life. Guess what? You're not my sheep. And guess what? The sheep of the flesh, the children of the flesh, they're not the children of God. The Israel of the flesh is not the Israel of God. The Jerusalem of the flesh is not the Jerusalem of God. And this world is not my kingdom. And unless you're born again, guess what? You cannot inherit nor enter the kingdom of God and all flesh is rejected. So you can stop the stupidity of what color is the flesh. It's dumb. I don't care how you drape it and put colors on it and do emblems and paint pictures and tell stories and fables and lies and all this kind of stuff. Great signs and lying wonders. I'm telling you that the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So then, brethren, we're not children of the bondwoman. We're not children of the flesh, but of the free. Now, how in the hell can this guy claim he's some some teacher? He's supposed to be the elder in the so-called conversation and he's confused as hell. There was a lot of prejudice against Gentiles. They wouldn't associate with them. They wouldn't go in their home. They wouldn't eat with them. They certainly didn't want them to be part of their. Uh... Right. We're not supposed to look. Once we're born again, our life is hidden. God, does God eat lies? No. Does God partake in darkness? No. Does God partake of, of corruption? No. Light hath no fellowship with darkness. You know, I'm confused by this. These guys are looking at it like, well, it's 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 because it's because of the they're they're they were being racist. They have they have to buy into that to corrupt the word of God. They have to invent that and then they have to actually embrace it. And then they perpetuate it by saying, well, I, I still do think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a race or ethnicity. Uh, in their faith, unless they converted to Judaism. No, unless you're born again, a true Jew. See, here's another thing. I just want to show you because this, this see this guy, this so-called brother Luke, is a is a big liar. First of all, in every pro listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this from India to Ethiopia. Listen to this. It talks about here 127 provinces. 127 provinces. Let's see, here we go. It listens. And the deputies, rulers of provinces, which are from India unto Ethiopia, and 120 seven provinces unto the provinces according to the writing thereof and in every people after their language and the jews according to their writings and according to their language it goes on and it talks about look the copy of the writing of the commandment was to be given in every province was published unto the people and that the jews should be ready against that day today if you hear his voice to avenge themselves on their what their enemies who's their enemy he does not for me is against me he does not scatter with me. He does not gather with me, scatter at the what? Abroad. So how do you avenge yourself? Well, you want to destroy the works of the devil, right? And how do you do that? With the word of God, right? You talked about the put on the whole armor of God. So the post that rode upon mules and camels went out being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment and the decree was given unto Sushan at Sushan the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel and blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. We are the circumcision that rejoiced in Christ and have no confidence. We are the circumcision which rejoice. We are of the circumcision which rejoice in Christ and have no confidence in the flesh. The Jews had what? Light, listen, and gladness and joy and honor. Think about it. The light of the gospel. Gladness, good news, joy, right? Joyful, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. 
and honor. Honor. It is sown in dishonor. It is sown in dishonor. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Sown in dishonor is raised in glory. And in every province, like the 127 province we talked about from India to Ethiopia, in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness and a feast, right? Remember, and a feast and a good day. Oh, they're not supposed to eat with the so-called such and the but you're offering them the bread of life and you're offering them the living water. But if they don't believe, that means they haven't eaten. Right? What do we ask for, guys? Our Father out in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Oh, the kingdom of God is at hand. You want to be born into the kingdom? Thy will be done. This is the will of him that sent me, that all who see the Son and believe have everlasting life. They say this is the will of him that sent me, that all who don't see and don't believe have everlasting life. No, he says, you believe not, you're not my sheep. And many of the people of the land, listen, many people of the land became Jews. Look at that. One day. Why? Enter my rest. Come unto me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. One day, many of the people became land of the people. Many people of the land became Jews for the fear, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord be persuade men fell upon them. See, they're, they're, they've been teaching you that it's, it's a carnal war and they've been teaching you that the so-called Jews are a race. But how do you explain that all these people in the land, they became Jews in one day? How do you explain that? Many people of the land became Jews for the fear of the Lord fell upon them. And then you go into the modern versions, of course, you know, just like the ones who say, you know, we, we're going to, we're going to add the word chosen race and the modern version, they're going to say, um, I'm surprised in this one, they actually kept it. Many of the people of the land became Jews themselves. Listen, I'm surprised they kept that. Listen, many of the people of the other nationalities became Jews. Listen to that. I'm, su I'm, su I'm actually shocked. They didn't change. Many of the people of the country declared themselves. See, now they're still, see, this is what they're doing in ESV. See, that's they get more like, oh, no, we can't have that. We can't have that. See, they got to make it as more they're trying to cement that lie of race. They say, oh, many of the people of the land declared themselves Jews. So the, the uh, in, so the Ethiopians and stuff, see, instead of it being people being born again, no longer the flesh. That's why they're like, oh, okay, we got to include some people here because we got to, to have this lie. It's so prominent in the scripture. So we just got to pretend that they, these are the so-called converts, but then we're the so-called natural Jews. These guys are such liars, man. Listen, many of the people of the land profess themselves. See how they're doing it? They're trying to make it like, like these people are just lying. No, don't think it. Don't, don't think these people actually are Jews. No. Listen to this. Look at this. Look at the new versions. Many of the people of the land pretended to be Jews. Don't tell me. See, these guys, they're so. I mean, just so wicked pertaining to hating the grace of God, but pretending to believe the grace of God. It, it's amazing. Let's listen to this heretic some more. So uh, that's the first thing. They, they weren't aware that uh, Christ is for everybody, Jews and Gentiles alike. And they also, they're not aware of that Christ is for everyone. How is a person saved if they don't understand Christ is for everyone? When there was a point where they weren't saved themselves. So that's just the kind of ignorance of somebody being like, oh, I'm a, I'm God's chosen. If you already think you're chosen, God's chosen people, then what, what the hell did you, what are you believing? See, what's happened is people, according to their flesh, get mixed up because these people are teaching these lies. And see, that's that's the problem. And that's what the same thing is going on now. But these guys, they're, they're helping perpetuate it, really. They're telling people that they're Jews when they're not. And that's problematic. They, they When they started uh, bringing Gentiles in because Peter was sent to Cornelius' house. God sent him there to... Uh, uh, give the Gentiles the gospel, and uh, 
there was resistance to that. They didn't want, they were angry and upset that Peter would do such a thing. And when they conceded that, okay, this is what God wants, they still wanted to insist that, okay, they, they need to convert to Judaism like us. They need to get circumcised. They, they must keep the Sabbath. They got to follow the laws of Moses. And by the time we get to the book of Hebrews, they're saying that, and then they got to continue doing the animal sacrifices. They did not realize that, um, that they- this is this is stupid. He's t- who who care? He's telling what what fa- what the false people believed, saying that we got to do. These are the gainsayers of Paul. These are the thorns in the side. These are the gainsayers. These are people who claim to be something they're not. You know, you if you read the scriptures and, and you look at there, what it, the Bible actually gives a definition of who a Jew is. These guys can't find it. They have the K, like this guy, he, he's the amplified, but Renee pretends to be KJV and she can't find it. She can't find the true definition of a Jew in, in the scriptures. She will, this woman will not let it go. This is why she's so concentrated on the flesh so much. She, she will not let it go. She mocks the idea of God being a spirit. She really does mock it. She loathes the idea. But she pretends to be spiritual. That uh, Judaism served its purpose. Now they need to leave it behind and, and, and make a clear separation between religious works of Judaism. Judaism served its purpose, but they need to leave it behind. Judaism never was of God. This is, this, this is what I'm saying. This is the foolishness that this guy is talking about. Judaism served its purpose. Judaism was never. Show me in the scriptures where it says Judaism is of God. You will not find it. It says, they that be of faith, these are the children of Abraham. They don't like that, though. They don't want to bring that up. They're like, well, okay, well, no, no. It's from faith to faith. It's not like, oh, well, that's a new that's a new thing that God did. Absolutely. absolutely. Judaism and faith alone in the Savior, Jesus. And this is the, these are the two problems that had to be resolved in the first century of the church. Uh, accepting the fact that there, Jesus is for everybody, not only Jews. And if you're not a non-Jew, you, you can come in and you don't have to convert to Judaism. And Paul even went to, so far as to say, if you are a Jew who now believes Jesus is the Messiah, uh, you should not continue practicing the law. That's why they wanted to kill Paul. It's stupid. Anybody who, if you're born again, you already know that. You're, I mean, to, to be born again is to know that I, I just like this is so I'm sorry this is because he was saying you're the guy that's got traveling all over the world telling us the Jews they don't have to keep the law so uh, this was the controversy in the church and this is what's being addressed in the book of Galatians Paul, not only Galatians but all of Paul's churches there was a people called Judaizers and they were from Judah uh, and which is Jew in Jerusalem they're not from Jerusalem above. They're from Jerusalem of this world, the bond children who won't inherit and they'll be cast out. That's, that's who they are. They're not the children of God. They're not the sheep of God. People who are children of the flesh. Here's the here's easy way to figure this out. Even if you're saved, the children of the flesh are not children of God. Do you get it? This is why it's no respect to person. And this is why people hate it. Because I can't teach racism if I'm like, well, the children of the flesh aren't children of God. You're like, but, but, okay, but what ethnicity are, are the children of the flesh aren't children of God? Why don't we just leave it at that? But, what, 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 who aren't you a descendant? No, the children of the flesh are not the children. But, but, and that's why Renee is like, well, okay, well, we got to include the flesh. The glorified body is the flesh. Renee wants, she wants the flesh so she can keep, the, you know what else you get to keep when you keep the flesh? You get to keep the complexion of the flesh. Then you get to keep the so-called identity according to the flesh. That's why she wants to keep it. She's like, don't put, don't put off the old man. Put that old man back on. Holes, and that, wounds, and hands, and pierced and all. They came from the Jerusalem church, led by uh, James, who is the leader of the Jerusalem church. and Led by James. No, any church, follow me as I follow Christ. It's Christ in us. So it, it, look, if follow me as I follow Christ is because Christ is in me. He's the first, the last, the alpha, and omega, the beginning, and the end. And they said that there were certain men from James came, and they're telling people that you got it convert and practice Judaism in addition to believing in Jesus. This was the error that was being uh, taught uh, at all Paul's churches. It was a big headache. And they believe this is what, when Paul says that there was, a, he had a thorn in his flesh. Well, um, I, we don't use that 
uh, vernacular today. Uh, okay. Normally, I would say that. Well, anyway, I'm gonna let that go because you know this guy is gonna go on. His, his 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 heresy will his heresy will go on forever. Here's what you should read. Now, read this, guys. When you get a chance on your own, I can read it real fast. But on your own, if you go to Romans two seventeen, and it talks about listen. <laughs> Ignore this stupidity. Ignore these titles. Behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law. Look, thou art called a Jew. Is that saying you are a Jew? No, thou art called. Anything they can do to add some confusion. Ignore the, the stupid titles, the subtitles, right? Behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God and knowest his will. Right? Let's talk about the will. Talk about mocking and approvers the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. Right? And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, the teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preaches a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Will a man rob God? Right? Thou that saith a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? That abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is this, is blasphemed amongst the what? Gentiles through you as it is written. But look, thou art called a Jew, right? For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keepeth the law. This is what the whole thing, well, we, we got to get circumcised if you keep the law, but it says, no flesh will be justified before him, right? It tells it says nobody's going to be justified by the law. For if thou be a breaker of the law, listen, thy circumcision is made uncircumcised. He's like, you're calling yourself something. Are you all the stuff that you're claiming that you're doing? Are you doing it? No, you're not. So he says, look, if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep, keep the righteousness of the law, should not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision. Meaning if they do what you say you are doing, then when they be called, they'll be called what you are being called, even though you're a hypocrite and not doing what you said you're going to do, which is how your identity is being defined. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does what? Transgress the law. Then, as it gets down to here, thou art called a Jew, for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that by the heart, listen, in the spirit. In the spirit. Listen, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not my sheep. I know my sheep. My word, the incorruptible seed, the word of God, of eternal life that liveth and abideth forever. My word hath no place in you. Is that by the heart? Because you got to believe in the spirit and not in the letter, not of the law, whose praise is not of men, but of God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Hence, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And that's who a real Jew is. If so, be the spirit of God dwelling in you. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not saved and salvation is of the Jews. So if you don't have the savior, you're not a Jew. You're not a sheep. You can't listen to this guy, brother, so-called brother Luke. You can't listen to this guy. These guys, I mean, these guys, I'm telling you, they, they're, um, this guy's a heretic. Luke is his bewitched co-partner. Uh, Renee is, you know, they're both false, false prophets. That's why they believe in the Trinity. That's, that's, that's their core doctrine is the Trinity. Core doctrine of the Trinity is trying to bring in what guys it needs to bring in the flesh. That's why uh, Renee is talking about. So we're going to get our glorified bodies is going to be of the flesh. She said, then we get our body. She's like, we're not complete yet. And then when we get our, our flesh. Then we'll be, we'll be complete. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Whom he justified, then he glorified. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. Oh, justified in the spirit, whom he glorified, he justified. Oh, he's going to be, uh, he's, he's justified in the spirit, therefore he's glorified in the spirit. And that's why you're not going to be made perfect in the flesh. 
the scripture is explaining that to you and it says no flesh will glory in his presence just just so we can get this clear no flesh will glory in his presence and then it says from glory listen but we all with the open face beholding in the glass of the Lord are changed in the same image from glory to glory even as by the what by the spirit of the Lord Last man Adam was made a what? Quickening spirit. It didn't say the last man Adam was made a quickening spirit in the flesh. That body that was raised that you could see, handle, and touch, which is in Romans 8, 11, tells Renee, and Renee doesn't, has not answered me even still, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by a spirit to dwell in you. God didn't pull a trick. That was a mortal body that had wounds in his hands. I, I think that's actually self-evident that it had wounds in the hands and ate dead fish means it must not be immortal because if it was immortal it wouldn't die in the first place. But if, uh, it, but if it, but if it was immortal and you'd have to ask yourself, well, why would God take an immortal body and put, and put wounds and, 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 and damage on it and, and pretended it was the one that died? Like it, did you swap it out or did you raise him from the dead? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm confused. And then Renee is like, well, but he walked through, but he could walk through doors. I'm like, well, but before the cross, he could walk on water. So what, do you, what the hell are you talking about? What, what the hell are you talking about? What's, that's your proof text? Uh, I'm looking for the proof text that says God is flesh. I don't see it. it says justified in the spirit, manifest in the flesh. But I mean, okay, it's, uh, it's God that worketh in me. If he's manifest in the flesh, I mean, I guess it's to reveal his son in me. It's like God's the savior, not me. So, I mean. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. How is he manifesting to you? I, I, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh. I guess you, he's, he's in me, but it says I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Same thing for the man, Jesus. Right? He, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but he's like, I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Right. Justified in the spirit, not in the flesh. It's, it's crazy, guys. I'm going to let this go, guys. Uh, I'll let it go.